Joins us now here on BYU Sports Nation, former Cougar quarterback, current radio analyst. Riley, like I said, it was good to see you yesterday. How are things? It's always good to be seen. And, yeah, being down there just reminds me that uh, I'm not down there enough. You know, I make it down there quite frequently, but it's never enough to return back home and uh, and be around all the guys and, and see all of you, and especially when we get to talk ball. There's no, Well, there's no question about that. I've always said more Riley, that more Riley Nelson is always good. There's no downside to more Riley Nelson. Riley, is there – are you the most beaten up BYU quarterback in school history? Uh, oh. Taysom had yeah. some uh, – Everyone seemed to get dinged up, but I just know you finished the, your career with, like, I think it was a broken back. Uh, yeah, and, and, and then torn. So it was finally revealed what Jaron's injuries were last year. I tore the cartilage that connects his ribs. I had that same injury. Uh, I actually had it twice. I had it my junior and my senior year. But once I finally was feeling better from the back, I, I had that in the San Jose State game, which was – our second to last game my senior year and it's hard to say like obviously the guys that went on to the I do not I will never try and compare uh, you know injuries and and you know bones sticking out and cartilage tears to, to guys like Jim or Steve or those guys that had long careers in the pro that's a completely different level but um, at BYU you know my deal was I never like I always all my injuries like brought me to the edge but not enough to knock me out like I'd say probably unquestionably taste him but all of his were like season enders right Mine were like oh you know miss a week and come back it just it's more but you're playing at 80 percent so you're more of a sitting duck to take more punishment but <laughs> given the chance to do it all over again I wouldn't have changed a thing yeah uh, you're a warrior you you uh, you gave it all that's yeah, for that, sure that's a it's a it's a good uh, it's a good phrase to describe you so Riley you know Dave and I in the last segment we went over the, the news items from yesterday's media day and our takeaways what stood out to you from BYU football media day yesterday the um so after doing a lot and being a back when I was a player, a participant, and then now uh, being a member of the media and being involved in in probably a half dozen of these now, uh, not it was like a calm or it's like a sense of um, self, like self esteem. Basically, the hype. There was a lot of talk about all the potential for the season, but it all was felt backed by work that's been done previously. Where before, it's like they're making comments about how good they think they're going to be or the success that they think they're going to have, kind of based on like a hope and a prayer. It's kind of like, oh well, we're really excited about this new thing and that new thing, and now it's like, listen, we were really good last year. We know we're going to be really good this year. The question is, are we going to go from really good to great? and elite that's what we're after and that's what we're putting in the work to achieve that for me was uh, there was just a different tone where guys felt secure in saying we know we're going to be good the question is not that the question is are we going to be elite which makes me really excited one thing i noticed with quarterback jaron hall as he gets ready for what could be his his final season he's got two years of eligibility remaining but there was an aura about him of uh i don't know if it's confidence um Comfort, comfortability, comfortability. There, he just seemed to be very in a good place for a, for a guy with a big schedule ahead. What did you notice of Jerem? I I was able to catch him like off air, just you know, a couple of BYU quarterbacks chatting over in the corner. And I'll I'll be honest, guys. Last year when they were saying it's a quarterback competition, I I didn't really. I, and keep in mind, I didn't have as much access. I wasn't at practice day in, day out. I didn't see how they divided up reps. But I was like, Let, they're doing this because, you know, Zach's leaving and they need to replace him and they need to say. But, like, it's obvious that it's Jaron. Like, Jaron's the guy. He told me that it was a full-on – like, he had he had no, uh, uh, like, assurances. He – it was complete blank slate as to whether or not he was going to win the job last year. So – for him, he just said that not having to deal with a competition within his own quarterback room has allowed him to focus on other elements of his game, which has brought an even he's already a very naturally like poised and collected player and individual. And it's brought an, an added level of that. And then one thing, one comment that A-Rod made that I liked was, OK, now he's not competing uh, with the other quarterbacks in the room, but he's got competitors across the landscape of college football. That by the names of Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud, Caleb Williams, like the who's who of the top quarterbacks at the top schools. That's who Jaron Hall's gunning for. And so to be able to take his, to elevate his sights for his own QB room, to go 
you know, be mentioned in the same breath as those guys. Uh, really exciting. Riley Nelson joining us here on BYU Sports Nation. And look, expectations are high for Jaron Hall. They're high for this team, and rightfully so. This team is really, really good and should do really great things this year. And one of the things, Riley, that I really liked yesterday and, and quite frankly stood out to me was that this team, and not in a cocky way, they leaned into those expectations. They were not hiding from that. Do you like hearing the teams lean into those expectations? I do because I have faith in Kalani. So I was, um, I, I, as, as the coaches were doing their, you know, it was the open kind of round table and they were each giving interviews and we were allowed to kind of go from table to table and listen, kind of drop in on what was being asked and answered. And Preston Hadley was asked a question about, you know, that's one of, I don't know the exact number, but it's one of very few staffs across college football that returns everybody. And they've made some very key additions in the form of analysts and, and other people on the staff. They've grown the staff, but they return each of the offensive, defensive staff and head coaches, which is a, which is a rare luxury in today's college football. And Preston Hadley was asked why that was. And he's just like, he goes, I got one word for you, Kalani. So the fact that the players, the reason why I'm okay with the players talking that is because it is real, like what Kalani preaches and the way that he builds the program. And he's player friendly and he gives them freedom and all that stuff. But it the only reason that he can give freedom is because he's built upon a foundation of like, guys, there is no entitlement here. Everything is only done through hard work and dedication, focus to your craft. Once that's done, then, yeah, we can have fun and we can be brothers and, and we can have more freedom. But it's that confidence in Kalani's ability to establish what the product on the field has already proven uh, that these guys aren't all taught. They are all stake, no sizzle. And on, in, a, in a forum like Media Day, where you're given the opportunity to talk about yourself, I was glad to see that they don't shy away. They don't give that faux, you know, self-deprecating, that faux humility. They're like, yeah, we know we're good. The question is, are we going to be great? And that kind of mentality heading into a season with this much returning talent, uh, it's hard for me. BYU fans, including myself, already have a hard enough time tempering expectations. But after yesterday, throw that out the window. Let's go, baby. <laughs> I was uh, driving into the show today, and I, and I was reminded that we are in the entertainment business. On this end of the camera and down on the field and on the microphone. And um, we get so serious about so many things. Certainly our fan base does. Um, but at, in the entertainment business, and you look at the schedule coming up and 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 everything you just said a moment ago, the word fun comes to mind when we get into August and then this schedule finally finally kicks off. And that's that's what it's all about uh, for, for all of us and, and for the fans. Uh, and this is a very fun schedule with a good team. I love so many elements about it. Um, you know, you start off, can we go event, you know, Jared Hall returning three seasons later or two seasons, depending on how you do your math, but basically can he avenge that 2019 law back in Raymond James stadium, the house of the bucks against the South Florida bulls. And then, you know, you coming back home and then you head all of a sudden to Autzen stadium, which is one of, you know, it's the rowdiest. And after the beating that BYU gave the Pac-12 last year, right, is or are they relying on Oregon to avenge that loss? And then you look for at the end of September, that first week of October with that Notre Dame game, guys, which like I'm not a player anymore. But the fact that those that those dudes and look, we kind of those that know knew that it was coming when we did the two for one with them. We already kind of knew that they were going to bail and find any way possible to not make it to Provo. So I'm OK with the compromise them in Vegas. I just really want to send those dudes home with an L. I just <laughs> some about it, man. I don't know if it's the shiny gold helmets or the fact that they were ducking, you know, coming into Lavelle Edwards Stadium. That would be so sweet. And then, you know, you mix in some old Mountain West rivalries with Utah State and Wyoming that we're probably not going to see ever again, or, or at least very intermittently, like, you know, decades between games. And then to finish off um, with the September, uh, like, especially in Palo Alto, where I think Stanford's on the rebound. And anytime you go in to play a David Shaw team, I mean, it's just littered with excitement week in, week out. I can't, I, I'm just tickled the fact that I get to be on the call week in and week out and watch this team prove all the things that we think they can be and that they are working towards being on the field in the fall. Even with all of the positive hype, no coach is ever going to feel like their team is a finished product, that, they, that there's not a place for improvement. 
for you with roughly five weeks from the start of camp, where's the biggest area of improvement for you or maybe the biggest unknown heading into the year? Um, the health of the linebackers, those dudes took a beating last year. Well, basically not just the linebackers, it's the front seven. Uh, I feel pretty good on the offensive line and, uh, feel pretty good about Brooks uh, coming in and replace, I, you know, I don't know if he's going to be the only one, but I feel pretty good about someone from that running back room emerging, obviously not being Tyler Algier, but, but serving that role in the offense, it's an embarrassment of riches, uh, on the outside. And of course we already, uh, meaning, uh, between tight ends and wide receivers. And then we've already talked about Jaron. So for me, most of my questions are on the defense. And this defense is the core of it is the front seven. It's how good it can that D line and those linebackers stop the run and create in coach in Greg and I's interview with coach Tuyaki on, on behind the mic yesterday, he went on probably a five minute monologue. It was great. Go. I, I encourage fans who are interested in the technical aspect of the game, go back and listen to it. Uh, where he talks about, yeah, interceptions are great and and all these things that the fans look at, but it all starts, interceptions and sacks and all that are great, but it all starts with the guys up front doing the boring jobs, doing the non-sexy jobs. So um, with the, the front four that kind of at times, especially when you look at the ball game, UAB kind of came right at them, hit them right in the mouth, and I don't know that they were ready to kind of answer the challenge. I think that they recognize that, are going to respond. And then that linebacking core that just – kind of wore, did their best to battle week in, week out, but wore down. Can those guys return to full health? And can those, uh, can the front four answer the challenge that they were kind of left with towards the end of the season last year and really be a hallmark of this BYU defense? That's the biggest thing I'm excited to have. That's the biggest question I, I am to have answered and the biggest thing to see these players prove. Five weeks now until camp. That's not very long. Uh, as you think back to your playing days, what goes on between now and when the players report um, to get themselves ready for the season away from from the coaching staff? So uh, at least from a physical standpoint, you're, it switches more from – so uh, winter conditioning is almost 100% about muscle and a little bit about keeping general conditioning. Then spring is about competition, kind of position development, getting a feel for your squad. Then you come out of spring and you still have a heavy period where maybe it's not as much like like build muscle, but it's about explosion. It's still very focused on, on lifting and getting stronger and getting bigger. Now you start heading, you know, end of June into July, and it becomes far more about speed, conditioning, and position mastery. So it's more nuanced. It's more about uh, the time, you know, Guys spending time together as position groups, kind of getting some one-on-ones, was getting things more down in football, maybe a little bit more time in film room doing that. You're still looking at your bodies. You're still trying to, you know, make sure your body is finely tuned, ready for the grind of camp, but you bring the volume down, but maybe keep the intensity up. So, so you have a little bit less wear and tear, but you're keeping your ability to peak perform. Um, and, and that, and then finally heading into camp, it's about taking a big, deep breath, decompressing, spending time away from the game with family and friends so that when you report to camp, you are just chomping at the bit, ready to go. Hey, I wanted to ask you something that, uh, that was, uh, part of the news cycle over the last week, uh, and it's quarterback related for BYU. What did you make of Jay keeps becoming the personal quarterback coach for, uh, for Russell Wilson with the Denver Broncos? It, it's pretty cool to think because you have, you have. Keeps in that situation. We obviously know what John Beck has done with Zach Wilson and a bunch of other quarterbacks. Max Hall does stuff. Ty Detmer's done stuff. What, 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 did, you, what did you make of that news and, and sort of the, the prominence of BYU quarterbacks uh, from a coaching perspective? It just proves that QBU, QBU of the 80s and early 90s did not go anywhere. The, the dynamics of college football shifted where basically – the Davy, the Davy O'Brien awards, the Heisman Trophy winners, you know, those are going, those just simply aren't going to non-Power 5 quarterbacks. They aren't. I can't, I don't know if you guys know the last non-P5 guy to win one, but it just, it just doesn't happen anymore. Now that BYU's back in the P5, we're more in contention. But that shifted, and that was outside BYU's control. But what it shows is that QBU never ceased to exist. We don't get just dudes that can throw the rock around. These are guys who have dedicated their life. They love the game of football. They dedicate their life to the game of football. They're darn good at the game of football. And even in the case of Jake, you know, like circumstances around his career, maybe it didn't play out on the field like he, but but that doesn't take away from the fact that the dude loves ball, that the dude knows how to, 
um, how to coach ball, right? That he he developed mastery of the game to be able to pass on to the next generation and to have that recognized but what by what is going to be a future Hall of Fame quarterback. And then, you know, John Beck was involved yesterday. You look at what Max is doing down in Arizona, building his program. You look what Dolman did as his stint, you know, being a, a coordinator and a coach. Like, honestly, guys, it's making me feel bad that I, that I put a headset on and talking to a mic for my contribution <laughs> <laughs> for Paul's playing career BYU. But, but no, I mean, it's just what BYU, it, it, it's the legacy see we are still seeing the you know the fruits of the legacy that Lavelle left which means anybody that comes through B any quarterback that comes through BYU is not your average guy he's a guy who's got something special to it and we're seeing it manifest in all sorts of post-career ways Riley Nelson on with us on this Southpaw Thursday because Steve Young's coming up next you know, hey there's nothing wrong with that for Southpaw. hey Riley if you uh, if you were on the field behind this line and with these receivers and uh, with Brooks behind you, how many um, how many reps do you think you could do before you tap out? <laughs> yeah, I think I can make it through at least a quarter and a half. All right, that's pretty good. That's pretty and that's, good. Hey, listen, that's not because the pro would break down or anything like that. That's because I couldn't help myself, but I'd get out running around, and then basically <laughs> after maybe one or two hits, the you know the thirty five year old body give in. Yeah, yeah, those, the younger body takes those a little bit better. Yeah, they just, the they mind, seem to, they seem the to mind back is willing, better. but. The, the heart and mind is willing, but the flesh is weak. And I think that would become very apparent first time I tried to leave the pocket and make one of those old plays I was famous for. All right, brother. Hey, thanks for joining us today. Great insights thanks, as Riley. always. Look forward to listening to you all fall. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having me on, fellas.